Uh, interesting question. Um, I had been talking to Abel about, uh, uh, about something like a celebratory volume uh, for this occasion. And the idea was uh, that the early open access pioneers should be asked to, to tell us what, how they saw the last 25 years, the development of open access, the development of CLO, uh, what their hesitations were, what their frustrations were, what their successes were, how they changed their mind over that period of time and so on, basically from a personal experience point of view. And uh, because I was involved uh, at the, you know, the, the, the outset of uh, the whole open access movement, if you wish, um, uh, I knew a fair number of those people personally. Uh, I took it upon me to, to uh, invite them. Yeah, I invited about 30 people, I think. But then I found out that some had moved on. Uh, into completely different fields and they said well you know I didn't really think about that for a very long time anymore so but 15 or so uh, people reacted very positively and uh, they they uh, sent in uh, essentially a blog post this is how they saw it yeah and uh, some longer some shorter some more detailed some more kind of at a different kind of you know an overview level and so on but I think it's a very interesting mix uh, because it's people from various continents, uh, various countries, obviously, from various... There's, there's one at the WHO, for instance, uh, at the one at the Wellcome Trust, and, you know, others in academia, in various, and, and, and some in, in more in publishing circles. And um, I thought it was very interesting that they, uh, that they reacted to the invitation. And then um, I put them together. I, I didn't really edit them, I just had a few questions for a few of them, like this is not really clear to me, so perhaps could you rephrase that or could you have a look at it, make it clearer uh, and so on. Because I also wanted to make sure that they could be translated because the, the, the deal was that they would be translated into Portuguese and to Spanish. And that means that it has to be unambiguous, clear easy for the translators. You don't want to present them with uh, impossible problems. Uh, so uh, it took a while before I had everything in. I had to remind uh, some a few times, but I did in the end uh, get that collection. I wrote an article myself at the end of it and, uh, and then a, a short introduction. And it is a, I think it's a nice collection. Uh, it's a nice collection of, uh, of uh, uh, let's call it articles, you know. I asked for blog posts, but it is, you know, it's, it's, it's articles, short articles. And uh, then, of course, I, uh, I sent them in uh, to Abel, and he, uh, he connected me with uh, someone who could, uh, who could arrange for the uh, translations. And in, in, in a few cases, there were questions still, like, what, is, what does the author mean? In a number of cases, I could solve that myself. I, I thought, okay, you know, this is English, but it is, it's written in English, but it is maybe a bit difficult to translate. You could also say it in another way, and I did that, but in, in one case I actually had to go back to the author and, uh, and ask, you know, what, what, what did you mean? Which is very interesting because one of the authors had actually sent in uh, an earlier draft than was meant to be submitted. So, it, oh, I said the wrong thing, and uh, Here's the right thing. So that was a bit of a, uh, uh, a bit of work, but it was it was actually all very it, it went very smoothly, and uh, so uh, they were all very pleased. There's there's one thing that I wasn't sure about, and they weren't sure about. Would there be a print version? And I now understand that that's still not a decision that's been made. Uh, but it will be an ebook, and, and everybody these days can, can read an ebook. Uh, I'm very pleased with the way it looked. Uh, I have, in my talk this morning, uh, taken the analogy of the, uh, uh, the loaves of bread and the fish, you know, for the Bible. Uh, that is uh, uh, about you know, we have only this limited amount of food and we have to feed a thousand people, so how do we do that? And then, of course, the interpretation is that was a miracle. I don't, I don't buy that uh, idea. I, I, I see it as a, a parable, as a, as a metaphor. 
And the metaphor is this, is, this wasn't food. The metaphor is this, this was about food for thought, about knowledge, in other, in other words. And of course, when you share knowledge, you can share as much as you like. And you even have more at the end because it kind of, you know, adds to itself, as it were. And that's very nice that they actually took that as the cover. So I'm very pleased with that. And it's available now. Uh, I've already put it on, uh, uh, on X and on Mastodon and et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully this will, and I have already a number of reactions uh, to it. So it's very nice. It's, it's, I, I look at CLO a bit from the outside. I'm not involved in any of the journals, uh, but I have been a publisher and uh, uh, for a long time an open access publisher. And I looked at, uh, uh, at CLO since I got to know uh, Abel. Um, and what, what, what strikes me is that the, the persistence with which it, it developed, you know, it, it, it always, CLO always looked at the final goal and, uh, and it made improvements all the time and, and so on. And uh, what I like about it is that uh, uh, that it really, I think it is really a paradigm of how these things should be done. And uh, they're, also, they're also not difficult about you know, changing things that don't quite work and so on. And I, uh, that appeals to me. It, it's evolving. And so uh, the, the importance of that, I think, to me is that uh, it, it, it's a model of science publishing that has a future, that is uh, even if the future looks different, that is an extremely good in, yeah, uh, uh, direction in which it's going. And, uh, uh, and it, uh, that seems to be the case uh, still. Uh, after 25 years, it's still moving uh, forward in the right direction. Sometimes it goes a bit slower, other times it goes faster. But also, uh, they look at the, 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 the technical quality of uh, publications. It's one of the few publishers that started uh, delivering uh, XML uh, as well. Uh, the others, they just deliver PDF. And uh, that becomes more and more important because of, you know, uh, machine readability and all that sort of stuff. So that's the significance of, uh, of CLO. To me, it's a paradigm. It's a, it's a, a model of how it should be done. not just talking about Cielo then, but, but about uh, science publishing as a whole, what I would really like to see, and uh, it is, there are more and more people who, who buy into that, is the, uh, uh, the separation on the one hand of the, uh, the scientific content, the research results and so on, to decouple that from all this prestige and impact factor stuff and so on. And it's, I mean, careers are important, but at the moment, these two things are entangled. And that is, I think, very, very inefficient and unnecessary. So uh, the idea is that if you publish with open access and your manuscript, uh, and then you can still submit it to a journal to get the, you know, the impact factor or whatever, or the, the kudos, uh, the, uh, the career advancement, the reputation advancement and so on. But to, to make the, uh, the science uh, hostage of the career advancement, I think is, is wrong. And of course, what you, so I, I hope that that comes off in the next five years. Now, the next 15 years, Perhaps one of the things that could happen is that uh, we talked about uh, uh, cross languages. It will probably take a bit longer, but what I would really like to see, and it may, may, may be quicker than that, but what I really like to see is that you publish it in a language, your own language, and then that there is an artificial intelligence unit that translates, this, translates it in any other language that's known from any language to any language. And if you then build up uh, a system whereby it doesn't matter in what language you publish, 
And uh, you have to, you know, it, it needs some work to, to get there, of course. But already Google uh, Translation is actually pretty good between certain languages. Maybe not for other languages, but and if you translate into English, that usually goes better than the other way around. Uh, but um, I can see that developing with AI uh, into a system where somewhere you can find any article as long as it's electronically available, I suppose. Uh, uh, any article in any language you want. And then you've really crossed that boundary, crossed that, uh, uh, yeah, that, that problem of inter. Now, what, hap what needs to happen, of course, you need to, have, have, uh, you need to make sure that the terms used, the scientific terms used, are indeed uh, truly compatible. So you probably need to feed the system with the Saurai and, and, and uh, uh, accepted uh, uh, or agreed uh, uh, vocabularies and so on. But those exist. So, uh, and, and, and then you can describe the, the concept. And the concept, once you have the concept, it doesn't matter in what language you express it, once it's clear which concept it is. So that's for the longer term, uh, I'm afraid. I would like to have it the other way around, so that that comes first. But, you know, realistically, uh, further than that, I can't. I can't really look. Fifteen years is quite long in this space. Yeah.